So I've started to mount my power steering bottle and what I was going for with the Mark IV one, that's the Mark IV Golf, uh, which would sit up on the chassis like here, like nice like it did in the Sirocco. I've decided that uh, on this occasion, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a BMW one. So this one comes out of an E46, but um, from what I can see, almost all uh, BMWs of that era, and even before that, back to E30, um, have the hoses going in the bottom, going out the bottom, which I think is going to work out a little bit tighter than I put it in 90 degrees. So what I'm doing is, I've just got a bit of hose that just popped in there just to hold it in place, and I'm going to sit this guy in here and kind of straighten him up. So we should put a slight dog's leg on the hose, but it's very minimal there. And I'm going to weld my bracket onto uh, the area here that the bracket I drilled off earlier came from. Uh, I've mounted up my reservoir bottle here just to make sure it wasn't uh, fouling it in any way or there was any pipes crossing over it. And I've tried the bonnet on as well just to make sure my reservoir fits in, even though it looks tall enough there if I was to go down level with the car, you'd say, ah, oh, it's going to hit the bonnet, but actually I can put my fingers uh, between it, which is kind of surprising, which is plenty of room. So the bracket I've got then is off the E46 as well, and I've started drilling and chopping it, and I uh, just said I'd give a quick look to see what I was doing. This is the E46 bracket and device, and it has uh, two legs on it, like this guy here. So it's got two legs there, one set here, and the second set then are kind of mounted over here if you can. So I've drilled out the, the wells, the spot wells, knocked the two brackets off, the simpler bracket that I would weld onto the car and leave this guy. Um, I probably probably put something in so I can put a nut and a bolt and take it in and out, uh, because it's probably easier uh, from a painting point of view and all that not to be trying to paint this inside in the car. So I'll weld something onto this, probably spray it black, just like the bracket would have been originally, uh, turn the bolt in so that it suits the way I want to sit it in the car. So something like this as opposed to with the two legs on it, this guy was being out here like that, if I was to use the two legs that were on it. So I'm going to turn it in like that there, so this is kind of way out of the way. And actually looking at it now, I think the best thing to do really is to make this guy so that it bolts in and out of the car. Uh, like I say, for painting, it makes an awful, things an awful lot easier. So I'll continue there and see what we come up with. So I think I've finished my bracket here initially anyway for uh, the bracket itself, um, fitting into the car, of course, would be uh, require another little uh, little piece of metal. So I'll just said I'd show that that all I've done is really um, drill the hole in this guy, plug weld him through this, the, the the actual BMW bracket, and if I open the vice here, this guy's still kind of hot there. If I open the vice, I've done the same thing here. Just have a rub of the die grinder there, uh, and just kind of you can see there where the weld is kind of going through there, I guess. So this is just a simple bracket now, so when it's fitted onto the car, it will be fitted in something like this. So I'll have my captive nut up and this guy, one bolt. So the piece I'm going to weld to the car, I'm going to weld in a feature to stop this from like, uh, like pivoting on the bolt and swinging around like that. So um, I'll get that bit done next. So here's the little bracket I've come up with. Uh, the hole here is for a plug weld, and um, this is sitting inside in the car, I'll be able to put a little bit of weld along the top of it here, I think, a couple of spots along, with plenty to hold in it. Uh, and the way I see this fella working is, he's going to sit in there, I'm going to put a nut on it, and my the piece I've bent around will stop the bracket from going from side to side. So I think that'll work out well. Uh, what I normally do if I do this type of thing is... I'd always uh, put the put the nut down and give it an old tight with the old spanner and just check the back of it then. See if I can open the vise here and just make sure that the plug weld isn't pulled or weld for the part um, isn't pulled up if you know what I mean. So it shouldn't be concave and if it is, it means that the stud is starting to pull out. So you might have to take another shot of weld there. I've got this fella tight now and he's sitting in there to find us to be no fear of it. So I fill it to the car now. So here I have the reservoir on. Pipes out the bottom. I like that. Uh, I've just got it stitched at the top. 
and a plug weld on the bottom. We've added a rubber grinder now just to smoothen it out. And the bracket just bolts on and off. And the bracket that's left behind, uh, be easy, be very easy paint around that. Um, I haven't welded across all the way along here. I mean, you could very easily do that. Uh, but I plan on doing there is, or maybe that I do some spray paint there that I'll kind of leave a little well of paint there and maybe some of it might seep down the back of the bracket. I mean, there's not much more I can do with it really. Um, so, it's another little job done. I think I'm getting close now to finishing up work on the engine bay. Uh, I haven't got my intercooler mounted yet, so I'll probably do that next. And I think that's about all I can do then in the engine bay. So it'll be a case then of mask up, uh, a bit of cleaning up with some uh, oil remover and stuff like that, and get a bit of paint on the engine bay. Uh, kind of match up the colour of the car maybe, or I might just go matte black, or just regular black. That'll work out the finest for me. I've been working away all week now on the car, and uh, what I've been doing really is uh, where the seam sear areas are that causes, cause corrosion problems, uh, which I did have in the past with this car here, uh, which is down in this area here. Um, so basically, um, I hoped out all the seam sealer there. Back to the repair patch that I had done in the past. And uh, luckily enough, I found that everything was well. There was a small skin of surface rust starting to form. Some paint was lifting. Uh, so I wire brushed all of that and I gave it plenty of galvanizing uh, zinc spray, let it dry, and then put seam sealer over to put some primer on that and finished it off then uh, by putting some uh, kind of like under seal or uh, Schultz I suppose most people would know that so I give them that uh, shot down around there and anywhere it was kind of getting loose and just basically um, some red primer to all of the engine bay and uh, the same happened over here but that happened during the cutout for the um, servo thing anyway so I did tape off this area here and managed to yank off some of my primer coming back, not ideal, but we'll get that going over now. So I've got all the engine bay now and primer. Didn't really intend on going this far initially, I suppose, but I suppose one thing leads to another. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of give a satin black that I've got. Uh, so I'm going to give it a couple of coats of satin black and then I'm going to um, sort out my fuel pipes first. Uh, brake pipes uh, fit back in the steering rack, uh, back in the servo, uh, basically start building the car back up and start putting the engine in for the last time, uh, which would be nice. And it'll be onto uh, like um, intercooler piping, uh, some radiator piping, and the wiring, of course, of, uh, of the whole shebang to get it running. So I'm getting to the stage now where I'm kind of like reaching over a major milestone, I think. Uh, once the engine bay is back in and fresh paint, it'll be time to hoist the engine back in. Uh, what I've been doing all along as well is um, while I'm waiting for different coats of paint to dry and the shelves to dry and all that kind of stuff and cure and go off, is I've been painting all the little brackets and bits and pieces I've made. And I've been doing the same thing on the inside of the car as well. I've um, put primer on the inside of the car and a bit of shelves here and there, a bit of seam sealer to any of the welded joints that I've done up. Uh, like for holding on the throttle pedal and in around the servo area mainly I suppose. So it's full steam ahead now on a bit of paint and reassembly then. Just about to start painting uh, when I noticed I had a snapped off screw or bolt I suppose inside in the car and this was this guy here. Uh, basically the top of the screw was flush with it so I didn't take much notice of it. Uh, definitely best if you can at all to sort all this out stuff before you start painting. I mean, that makes sense, of course. So I drill, I marked in the centre as best I could. I drilled the first 3mm, 4mm and then 5 and uh, some of the screw fell out. The bits that didn't fall out, I tapped with a, with a chisel and a hammer and eventually drove a tap down through it just to clean up the tread again to make it usable. Uh, this, of course, the ones that where the screws are broken, of course, are the ones that you're using. And this one is for holding on the Mark 1 radiator. Um, I'm thinking I will be using the Mark 1 radiator uh, going forward. I don't see why to change to the Mark 2. People have said on the internet that the Mark 2 radiator is better. I've been looking at it and I don't think there's much difference in the core size. So I don't think there'll be much difference in the cooling ability. But uh, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. 
Um, I suppose just something to note, uh, get these guys sorted before you paint your bay. Finally getting around to uh, doing a bit of reassembly. Uh, I guess it's always a nice place to be, putting stuff back on. Probably takes three times as long as taking things off though, with uh, fitting stuff and putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off. Uh, anyhow, I've got the servo and the steering column and all that stuff in. I ran some copper lines across to uh, my two uh, ballasts for varying the pressure to the rear wheels. Um, I had a, a flexible um, line going to those before, but of course the servo was mounted here. So now that I've over here, I decided that the copper line is best for there anyway. So it runs in nice and neat. I've re-ran out um, just by swapping left and right. Um, my cables here, the flexible cables, out to both... Uh, the left and the right wheel and I ran the cables down in behind the pipes and stuff there. I'm going to make up a little adapter uh, for putting the Toyota pipe on here. Um, this pipe is just a little too large for it. it's 12 millimeters outside and um, the pipe is the total Toyota pipe is more suitable for like eight so I'll make a little adapter there and I'll just give it a quick shot of a TIG torch just to TIG it on and I'll do the same over here where my reservoir goes uh, so that fella there will be a little bit easier to get the pipes to match up on. So now that I've got those bits and pieces in, I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start running in some of the wiring. That's for the lights in the car. And some of that wiring, if you remember, on the left-hand side of the car um, definitely, needs, um, definitely needs a bit of shortening up. And I might run some, in some extra cables while I'm doing it as well, just in case I need anything else in around the engine bay. Uh, this is the return pipe on my uh, power steering here. So, as you might have seen in the car there, stainless pipe bent all around, took a little bit of time. Uh, working out fairly well. Um, but uh, connecting it onto the Toyota rack um, poses a little bit of a problem really. It's not a big problem. Uh, this tubing here is your typical Toyota metal pipes that they use. And they push the rubber hoses on over them with a clip. Uh, like this is a return pipe, so this is under no pressure or anything. Um, but this metal pipe I got here um, is a uh, half inch in diameter, so it's 12.7 mil. This guy here uh, is 10 mil where the tube sits, and kind of 11 ish uh, where the bar type part is pressed in there. So you, this tube here is far too big for the rubber hose to fit on over. So what I've done is I've machined up this little part on a lathe just to kind of emulate what that is. So it's similar dimensions, not identical or anything. And I've left a little step on the end of it here. And the little step will fit into the imperial tubing that I have. So this guy just this guy will sit in here. And what I do then is I just fuse these guys together with a TIG torch. So there's no real need for filler rod or anything like that, I don't think, but I'll have a bit at handy, just at hand, just in case. And just run this guy in around here. So then my Toyota pipe off the return line in the power steering will push on over this guy and put back on the Toyota clip there. And I think it'll make a nice little job. I'll make one of these as well for the other end. And I'll make that to suit the BMW um, tubing that goes onto the return uh, for the reservoir, that's the BMW uh, one I'm using that I made the bracket for earlier. So another little piece there to try and keep everything nice and tidy and neat. And let's go and weld it up now and fit it. Uh, just as a point to know, if you can use the tail starlet pressure pipe, it fits onto the volt second pump, no problem at all. Uh, I have it done in my Sirocco and I'm just kind of offering it up here uh, just for the lint of it, just if I turn back into the wishbone there of the way at the minute and the lint of it looks pretty good and it looks like it could fit in around uh, in under the mount over here I stick like the metal pipe I made up uh, I got these guys welded up too Let's see if I can get a bit of focus there and got the pipes around them so I just puddle them in and uh, the same thing done over here in, in the one for the reservoir so I just literally ran the torch around and just let it melt it in. My, my stainless welding wouldn't be the best. A uh, little bit out of practice. Uh, so while I had my um, my cross member bar this guy down here out, I gave it a clean, shot a spray, got a few scratches and stuff from pulling the engine in and out. 
Um, so that's back in again now. Uh, the engine bay sprayed up. I'm not sure if you can see the colour there, but just to kind of keep it clean looking. Uh, on the wiring of it, I've had to make a few changes to the loom. I removed all the hard plastic protective cover that was on this guy here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see now the sun, a lot of complaints. Um, because basically it was gone so hard it was gone brittle. And it was the same on this side of the car over here as well for the lights. Uh, it's gone pure brittle inside in the car and literally nearly impossible to move around the car to do any bit of work with it. Uh, I couldn't really fish wires through it or anything like that so I just cut it all up in a big pile and cut it off and I'm just uh, wrapping it up here in your typical uh, loom type tape there. Uh, you can see that fella there. Uh, I like using this stuff, it's nice and flexible. Not sure how waterproof it is but I don't think it really needs to be waterproof inside here anyway, especially when some of the wires are exposed for things like the lights and stuff. It really matters then. So off my Mark IV loom then I've salvaged the plug here for the water bottle and I've connected it back in. Of course that water bottle would have been over here in the car on the Mark I Golf. So now that that's gone from here, uh, I have the wiring pulled in pulled in here that the wiring would have been in this part of the loom and pulled in along the back of the dash. Uh, just pulled it all back over in as far over as far as the fuse box and back out over here for this guy here. And the brake reservoir of course that would have been that would have been here roughly. So that, that wiring for that went this direction as well, in over the left hand side of the car. So I've rerouted all the wiring in underneath here, just basically opened up the loom, pulled it all back out and put this guy back on here. Uh, so now I have the, the brake uh, fluid level warning light. Uh, the only thing that's a pain in the ass really doing that is in the grommet guy that's in here, going back into the car, uh, you've got to remove these plugs and depin them uh, or you just rip the crap out of the grommet or just not get them in. Uh, so I depend all these plugs and fish the wiring back out through them. A bit of a pain in the ass, but it's, it's, it's not that difficult to do. And I think it makes the install a lot tidier rather than chopping up the boots and dragging the wires in through them and trying to put them back together with tape or glue or something. Uh, so we won't go there. So I'm at the point now where I think I am as good as ready to start putting the engine in. Um, having to run some extra wiring here. Um, so I lint in the ones for the alternator and they aren't going to be long enough from the loom. I would have thought they would have been but just by looking at it it looks like they won't. Um, uh, I got all the like the covering removed at the minute so what I'm doing kind of really there is kind of placing it in uh, because there is some of this wiring I can shorten up. Uh, so I'm going to do that while I'm at it I think or else keep the wiring inside in the car in under the dash as opposed to having the wiring, the excess wiring out in the engine bay. Uh, so I think it's coming together now for me nice. Uh, I'm not far off now putting the engine in. I'm just running through the uh, wiring diagram. The engine. So the bits, the bits I have to figure out really is this 14 pin plug here that's on the engine loom. So I'll tell you what all these pins are for. Just by the numbers it's a 14 pin so it'll be like T14 1, T14 2 and that will be like pin 1, pin 2 and that kind of stuff. And this guy is a 2 pin plug. I'm not sure what this one is for yet. Um, I can follow that of course in the loom because I, I did mark it up and I took it apart. And I do have the Mark 4 loom. So, and I look at the wiring diagram there. So we've got a purple and black wire there. It's a pretty hefty wire so I'm thinking it's power to a load of stuff inside in the engine. So that's uh, progress now. Inside in the car of course the uh, the loom looks a bit of a mess at the minute. There's kind of, I'm sure you can see it there. The sun is kind of playing with the camera there, but there's like wires all over the place at the minute. At the minute. So the plan is to tidy all that up and keep going. I'm putting the engine back into the car and bolting it all up like there's a I guess a small bit of fiddling around with the engine pushing and shoving around it maybe a crowbar or something like that just to get the engine into the position you want before you tighten up all your mounts but what I did notice was when I put back in my gearbox mount I noticed a wee little crack in the weld here there we go you see she's just starting to crack there where the weld ends probably the weakest point I suppose um, 
But what I also noticed was, now that I'm zooming back with the, the camera here, you'll also notice if I put a square up against it, uh, it's not really that square anymore. You can clearly notice it's out by about three millimeters or so where this guy's actually bent. So this guy's no longer 90 degrees. My plate up here now, you can almost see it in the shot with the camera there. You can almost see how, how crooked it's become. And I mean, that's with the 110 horsepower engine. So I'm thinking that this bracket definitely isn't going to be up to the AUM engine. Uh, with the boost coming on and all that so what i've decided to do is to square this guy back up again inside the vice and add an extra piece of metal here along this here and then from here back up to maybe in around here somewhere so to put a bigger basically a bigger triangle uh into this to support it further up so i guess i created the problem myself on the mount and um, by just having one bolt here so most of the pressure i suppose is on here and because i have no ribs built into this piece it's just flat um, I'm thinking to myself that's why that's bent from here so this bracket effectively is bending like that under acceleration flexing away a little bit a little bit and that's why the crack has started so hopefully we'll remedy that now and uh, put it all back together again I've added some extra metal to my bracket I cut off the small piece that was here and I put in a fresh piece of metal there and another one here and the idea of that is to avoid uh, some features that are on the differential on the gearbox. So now I've got it held up on definitely on two bolts. And so when the pressure is pushing against this, it's going to want to pull this bolt out, uh, which I'm hoping wouldn't happen. And the same with this one here. So the way I had it, I kind of ended here. So when the pressure came on, it was actually hinging across this bolt really, I think, and bending. And that's why it cracked. Uh, so now I've got plenty of weld on the inside. Uh, it doesn't have to look too pretty. Um, but on the outside here now I've got a lot of extra metal as you can see there if you can look back and see what the first one looked like there's a substantial extra amount of metal there it's all 3 mil mild steel I've squared it back up again to 90 degrees uh, sit back down the way it should so hopefully uh, the AUM engine and the O2J box will get on okay with this guy now uh, I remade my front engine mount this is going up by the starter motor so this is the assembly just by folding up a few pieces of metal really and the reason I've kind of done it is one thing I always noticed and I kind of mentioned earlier maybe is the fit in this guy always just seems a little bit off in the car I'm not 100% sure why my engine seems to be in the correct place um, my drive shafts line up nice and straight to the wheels if anything they're slightly forward um, which would mean if I was to bring them back dead straight the bushing here would be even further out of this guy now it could be just down to this poly bushing uh, but on these guys here there's quite a large hole for the bolt so there's a fair bit of potential moving around now I know when they're tight they shouldn't move but I'm not overly happy about it I suppose so I've made these guys up and I've kind of filled the holes nice and close fit to the bolt that was in there which I think is an M10 so this is just a piece of flat metal cut and rolled around welded across under the bottom and then four welds will kind of call them in the corners just a quick run of weld across the top and the bottom not too fancy and uh, made up of kind of like a three millimeter metal this guy here is like about 1.5 or thereabouts um, just for ease of rolling I suppose so I'm much happier now with the fit of this in the engine uh, with regard to the bushing and where the engine is actually sitting because um, it looked like the engine was leaning a little bit back um, uh, but this guy now definitely won't let it lean back uh, it'll be fairly fixed and I've got this guy welded up as well and I have these poly mounts in the car for a long time now so this is my extra pieces of metal I welded in so not too pretty there but they definitely do the job it's, it's definitely not much stronger and it's amazing what a coat of paint does to make these things look uh, somewhat professional uh, so I'm going to fit these guys back in now and hopefully forget about them uh, mounts all freshly painted my new mount here from a gearbox guy and my mount back here at my rear of my gearbox you can see the Toyota steering rack down here all fits in nice and snug here I have my heat shield put in ample clearance down around here for anything uh, the camera is probably not showing a good view there but uh, there is acres of room down here I can get my hands in around here no problem whatsoever and of course the big change to the car apart from the engine is uh, the direct acting servo and here we have it in 
at the back end of all second, this is the 22.2, I believe, uh, the G60 Masterson that I had in the car all along. I was, I'm very happy with the brakes in the car, so I want to try and keep them. I was a bit nervous, maybe. I backed out of uh, putting in the aluminium uh, master cylinder, which probably realistically longer lasting wise, it probably is better. Uh, won't corrode or anything, but this one is still in really good shape as well. And I've got plenty of clearance down here. There's enough anyway. I can, uh, I guess I can pass my hands in around here just as, a, just as an idea. It's not acres of clearance, and by not having acres of clearance, I suppose, here, uh, one thing is the uh, mounts down here, the poly mounts, front and rear here. These two guys will definitely help with that. The engine is quite solid inside in the car. Um, I'm trying to move it here now, but you can, you can move it a very, very small amount. Uh, of course, the engine power would push that around a bit. Um, so, um, I guess I'm happy with all of this. You can see where my fuel pipes are going to be. These guys are going to hook in here with some fittings that I've made up. I'll show you them later. Uh, but I think the uh, direct servo is looking good. The right hand drive car with the engine, plenty of room for everything. Um, I'm still going to run with the battery in the boot, I think. So I'm going to have a lot of room out around here. Um, and my plan is for the intercooler pipes to come out this direction over here, across the top of the chassis, like maybe in here at the intercooler. I have those things got now, so um, I'm going to do next is probably fit up the exhaust and. Uh, hopefully that goes in pretty good and I put that I have some more that welded up so I'll show that in another bit of a clip and uh, I'll work on there then I'll try and put in the coolant bottle uh, put in uh, some extra wiring around the engine I have this guy my engine loom here I have a grommet already in here I open up this plug and I have a grommet here and of course I have my hole in here some wiring hanging out that's the, that's the one for the wipers so back in here, there was a hole in the car back in there and if the camera focused, but anyway, it's in over here, basically. It's in here. So I have a grommet for that there on the wiring loom. Now I am going to be running some extra wires out on this loom, and they'll be the wires to power, power up the coils and bring back in some of the signals uh, from this socket here, which are, uh, this is a 14 pin socket, I think. The ones for the eye light and stuff like that, and the temperature for the dash is inside in this guy here. Um, I have been looking at the net there and I believe there's some trickery you got to do with maybe some resistors and stuff to get the temperature one to work right. And also the eye light switch, um, there's guys putting in uh, double uh, eye light switches for the Mark II DAC, the clocks to work correctly. Um, but I did a fix for that in the Sirocco which I think is a little, a little neater. Uh, it just involves a little relay and it emulates the second one, the second oil uh, pressure switch. Um, so I might do that or... Uh, I might until I'll see what I'll do.